Glossary. Add key terms. A glossary would typically contain key terms and definitions in a subject area. For example, this theatre glossary. With a Moodle glossary, you can browse by alphabet, category, date or author, and you can also search for particular key terms. Because Moodle encourages collaboration, learners can add terms to a Moodle glossary, so you could create a glossary where they can build their knowledge together. Let's make a glossary in a Moodle course. To do that, we need to turn the editing on, either by clicking the button top right or by scrolling down and in the administration block, clicking the link Turn Editing On. Then in the section where we'd like a glossary, I'm going to add mine in the writing section, we click the link Add an activity or resource. This brings up the activity chooser. Glossary is an activity because learners interact with it. And so we can click the button twice to open it straight up or once to get some information about ideas for using the glossary and then the add button at the bottom. The name is important because this is what the learners will see on the course page. In the description, add the instructions that you want to give them for adding their key terms and you can display this description on the course page if you want to by checking the box. There are many other settings and you can find out about these and explore them by expanding the links. So for example, if we click Entries, we can decide as the teacher whether to allow all entries to appear immediately or whether we want to moderate them first. Whether we want duplicate entries, in other words, can two learners post the same key term? And whether we want to allow them to comment on each other's entries. Linking glossary entries means that if a key term is added to the course page or items within the course, then it's automatically hyperlinked to the glossary entry. And this makes use of filters, which we will look at in a separate video. Likewise, if we click on Appearance, we can decide how we want the glossary to be displayed, how many entries to show per page, for instance. Once we're happy with all of these settings, if we scroll down and click Save and Display, that takes us straight to the glossary, where we can add our first key term. And we do this by clicking the Add a new entry button. This is what the learners will do when they contribute to the glossary. For concept, we type the actual word, and in definition we type what it means. It's possible to add keywords and also to add attachments such as images to the glossary. And you see that as we go through each entry we can decide whether it should be automatically linked or not and whether to match whole words or just parts of words inside the glossary entry. This is quite important to think about. Finally, we save the changes and we have a glossary with one entry already there. If you are considering trying a glossary activity, it is worth also exploring the random glossary entry block.